Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 ARM-based single board computers for emulation in 2021. Now this is my list. I've done a lot of testing with all of these boards, and if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I'm a huge fan of ARM-based SBCs, specifically for emulation. Like I mentioned, I've done a lot of testing on the channel with all of the boards we're going to take a look at in this video, and when it comes down to it, this is my list. These are my top 10 picks. And you might have a different opinion on where these go on your list. So, I mean, if you're interested, you can leave your list in the comments below. I'd actually like to know what your favorite board is and really what you've been using for emulation in 2021. Now, remember, this is an ARM-based board list. We're not going to be taking a look at anything with an x86 CPU in this video. And there's some really good boards on the market using x86. And most of the time, when it comes to emulation, you're probably going to get better performance out of something like that. But when it comes to these ARM-based boards, these are my top 10 picks. So coming in at number 10, we have the Jetson Nano 2GB version. Now one of the reasons this is coming in so low on the list is because of the development towards emulation on this board. There are a few distros out there that do have a lot of emulators built in. You can install Ubuntu on this and run a bunch of emulators. It's actually a really powerful board at a great price, but there's not a lot of emulation developers out there working on optimizations for this thing. What we have here is the Jetson Nano 2 gigabyte model. It's coming in at 50 US dollars. We have a quad core ARM A57 CPU running at 1.43 gigahertz, two gigabytes of RAM and a 128 core Maxwell GPU. This will actually play easier to emulate GameCube games It'll do PSP, Dreamcast, and even Sega Saturn. But like I mentioned, one of the big reasons this is coming so low on the list is because there's not a lot of development geared towards emulation on this board. Now, if you had the regular Jetson Nano with 4 gigabytes of RAM, you could actually download Retro Arena from Tech Toy Tinker. He's got a lot of systems set up. It works out really well. But that's about the only emulation OS that I've seen for these boards here. Moving up to number 9, we have the Rock Pi 4. Now there's a few different models of this, I believe the A, B, and maybe even a C model of the Rock Pi 4, but we have USB 3, USB Type-C for power in, full-size HDMI, and it's powered by the Rock Chip RK3399 CPU with up to 4 gigabytes of RAM. Now, I'm personally not a big fan of the RK3399, but development has actually come a long way in the last year on this little chip here. But what we have here is the Rock Pi 4 by Radaxa. You can get these up to $75 with 4 gigs of RAM. The CPU is the Rock Chip RK3399, 6 cores, 2 A72 cores running at 1.8, and 4 A53 cores running at 1.4. The GPU is the Mali 860 MP4, and this will basically do up to PSP. And when it comes to PSP, there are still a few games that struggle on this, but like I mentioned, development has come a long way on this little chipset in the last year. Moving up to number 8, this really needs no introduction. We have the Raspberry Pi Zero, or the Zero W. Now this is a great little board for handheld projects when it comes to like handheld emulation, but it's very very low in power and even some SNES games can lag if it's not set up correctly. And that's why this one's coming in at number 8. Now don't get me wrong, this has been one of my favorite little single board computers to build handhelds around, but uh, you know in 2021 it's getting a bit long in the tooth given that we only have a single core 1 gigahertz CPU with 500 megabytes of RAM. You can pick these up anywhere from $5 to $15 depending on where you go. Very low power consumption, that's why they're great for handhelds, but this will basically only do up to around SNES and GBA. It's definitely time for the Raspberry Pi Foundation to update this board. Keeping with that Raspberry Pi Zero form factor, we have a new one to the market, the Redaxa Zero. Now this is actually a really powerful board given its form factor, and they're offering a bunch of different models, from 512 megabytes of RAM and no eMMC storage, up to 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Now that's built-in storage, plus we have a micro SD card. From what I've seen, anywhere from $15 up to $75, we have a quad-core Cortex A53 CPU running at up to 1.8 gigahertz. It's an Amlogic S905 variant, so it does have a lot of support on the market right now. The GPU is a Mali G31 MP2, up to 4 gigabytes of LP DDR4 RAM, and up to 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage. I've taken a look at one of these on the channel. I did some emulation testing, and this will do up to PSP. It's actually pretty amazing what this little board will do given that it's the same exact form factor as the Raspberry Pi Zero. 
Number six on my list is the Odroid C4. Now development on this little board has really come a long way when it comes to emulation. The chip they're using in here has been out for Android for a while. A lot of people have been working with this and we do have a few different distros like Emulec and Botocera that we can flash directly to a micro SD card or an optional eMMC module. This is powered by the Amlogic S905X3. We have a quad core Cortex A53 CPU running it up to two gigahertz. Mali G31 MP2 GPU, up to 4 gigabytes of RAM, and like I mentioned, this does support an SD card or an optional eMMC module. And again, just like some of the other boards, this will basically do up to PSP really well. I've also had really good luck with N64 emulation on the C4, and when it comes to the price on this, 54 US dollars from Odroid's website, but you have to factor in shipping there, and if you try to buy this on a third-party site, you're going to see it upmarked. I've seen it go for around $75 on some sites. This is an old one, but in my opinion, it's still a great little board. This is the Odroid XU4. I'm not exactly sure when this is going to reach end of life, but if you have one of these boards, you know how great it was or is for emulation still. This does really great N64 and PSP emulation, and it really doesn't matter if you're running Android or something like Botocera, standalone emulation OS for this thing. But for the CPU, we have an 8-core Samsung Exynos 5422, up to 2 gigahertz. Only 2 gigabytes of RAM, but that's plenty for emulation and what this little thing can do. It supports a micro SD card or an optional eMMC module. Like I said, amazing N64 and PSP emulation. Dreamcast works really well here with an Android build and using ReDream. And from Hard Kernel's website, you can pick these up for around $60. To tell you the truth, I probably wouldn't buy one of these new anymore. If you can find one used or if you have one laying around, you can still use it for emulation and have a great time with it. So this is going to be the most expensive. It's actually an outrageous little ARM board, but I had to throw it in here because this is the best ARM emulation that I've ever seen out of any single board computer. I've done a couple videos on this board. This is known as the Jetson Xavier NX. Price on this is absolutely outrageous for a little ARM board, but these aren't made for, you know, recreational use. These are made for AI, automation, and robotics projects. And this still falls in line with the Jetson Nano really not having that emulation support, but with this raw power, I mean, this thing goes through everything. The GPU is based on NVIDIA Volta architecture with 384 CUDA cores, and it comes with 8GB of LPDDR4X RAM. I've been able to run GameCube and Wii on this no problem at all, and I can even upscale to 1080p with most of that stuff. Now that might not sound like a great achievement when we're comparing this to x86, but remember, this is an ARM single board computer, and like I mentioned, this is the most powerful one that I've ever been able to get my hands on. I would highly not recommend buying this specifically for emulation. Now I'm going to be cheating here with number 3, because when it comes down to it, this is actually using FPGA to run our favorite retro games, but it does have an ARM CPU built in. This is known as the DE10 Nano, aka the Mister. If you head over to the Mr. Project's website, you can see a list of all of the arcade machines and consoles that we can accurately recreate on this little device here. There's tons of different accessories that you can buy for this, add-on boards, extra RAM, to help out with consoles like Neo Geo, and this can also get pretty expensive. But if you want the most accurate console or arcade experience without having to buy the real arcade machine or the real console, then the Mr. is definitely for you. It does have an 800 megahertz dual core Cortex A9 ARM CPU, but when we're playing our favorite games on this thing, we're not using that ARM CPU. We're actually using the Cyclone 5 FPGA that's built into the DE10 Nano, otherwise known as the Mister. Number two on my list is one that a lot of people have been sleeping on, including myself. Now, I do want to make more videos on this, but it really seems like there's not much interest in this board. With the newer revisions of this board and the development that's been going on with this thing, it is an absolute emulation beast. So close to getting GameCube out of the way, but uh, unfortunately I just don't see this board ever doing GameCube at full speed, maybe the next one. But when it comes to Sega Saturn, PSP, Dreamcast, N64, this is going to handle it all day long. And there's lots of different operating systems available for this board. It's the Odroid N2 Plus. Up to $83 for the high-end 4GB model. We have the Amlogic S922X. Four A73 cores up to 2.4GHz. And two A53 cores up to 2GHz. You can pick up a 2GB model for a little cheaper. But I would definitely go with the 4 just because, you know, they have it there. No onboard Wi-Fi, no onboard Bluetooth, and that's really a letdown for a lot of people, but we do have four USB 3.0 ports, full-size HDMI, 
It supports a micro SD card and an eMMC module. And yeah, I mean, when it comes to raw power, this will run circles around the Raspberry Pi 4. And that's really going to bring me to my number one spot in this video. A lot of you saw it. You knew it was coming. Number one on my list is the Raspberry Pi 4. And this really pertains to any of the Raspberry Pi 4 variants. We go with the Raspberry Pi 4. We also have the Pi 400 and the CM4. The Raspberry Pi seems to be at the top of a lot of different lists, and for good reason. I mean, when it comes down to it, there's a lot of different factors why this is number one on my list. First up, the Raspberry Pi community. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of people working on the Raspberry Pi. Different projects, home automation, factory automation, AI, solar projects, weather projects, car projects, radio projects. I mean, you name it, somebody's probably done it with the Raspberry Pi. And when it comes to emulation, the development community really focuses on the Raspberry Pi because it's readily available. I mean, you can actually walk into a Target or a Best Buy and buy a Raspberry Pi 4 in a physical store in the United States. Of course, some of the boards that we took a look at are definitely way more powerful than the Raspberry Pi, but uh, ease of use really comes to mind with this thing, given that the community has so much to offer. If you have a problem with the Raspberry Pi, somebody else has probably had that same problem. Type it into Google, and you can get a fix for it pretty easily. If you're looking for a specific distro to run on the Raspberry Pi, somebody's probably already come up with something. Be it like a home automation interface, a weather station, or even an operating system geared towards automotive usage. Now, I know this video was the top 10 single board computers for emulation, and Raspberry Pi comes to the top of the list. N64 and Dreamcast have definitely come a long way on the Pi, especially Dreamcast, given that we can now run ReDream. GameCube is one of those that'll never run at full speed on the Pi 4, but it definitely tries its hardest. It's not the most powerful single board computer out there, but in my opinion, it's the most versatile. And that's really why the Raspberry Pi 4, the Pi 400, and even the CM4 are at the top of my list for this one. So yeah, that's my top 10 list for 2021. If you're interested in picking up any of these boards, I will leave links in the description. And I know there's going to be people out there who disagree with me about where I put certain boards in this list. So if you have your own list, let us know in the comments below. You can go ahead and write that out there. It would be awesome to know what your top 10 boards are for 2021. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.